My palms slicked the worn grip of the mag cutter as I edged the laser along the derelict airlock. Sparks flew like angry hornets, the screech bouncing off the pitted metal hull. Space is all about silence, except for that ever-present buzz in your suit, the background rumble of the ship, and those rare moments the void lets loose a symphony of destruction. Trace, how's it looking? Captain Garrett's gruff voice cut through my helmet speakers. The old man wasn't going to let me enjoy this. Almost there, Cap. Give me two. I shot back. A chuckle. You buying the drinks if this pans out, kid? I hear those deep haulers back on Ceres Station make a killing. A killing's right. We scavenged the ass end of the belt, hopping from broken down freighter to busted satellite, barely enough to cover fuel and rations. But this, this derelict was a different beast entirely. Nothing Earth made. Curved architecture that looked organic, fused to the hull like hardened tumours. Whatever species crafted this ship had warped across the stars before humanity ever dreamed of throwing a shuttle into orbit. The mag cutter died with a sputter. I pried the seared metal panels off the airlock, fingers thick in my gloves, eager to get inside. A stale, metallic scent wafted out, ancient and alien. You're in, Trace came Grady's bored drawl over the comlink. Even through the distortion, I could hear the faint edge of nervousness. He might put on a stoic face, but something about this hulk had the rest of the crew on edge. Roger that, I said, a grin spreading across my face. Let's see what the old girl's got. I squeezed into the tight chamber, my headlamp slicing through the gloom. It was enough to make out the inner airlock, a quick check on my gauntlet system overlay confirmed a breathable atmosphere. I punched the pressure release. The second set of doors hissed inward, spilling me into an alien tomb. My first thought was the scale. No human engineering built like this. The arched corridor stretched into darkness, smooth walls rippling with an almost fleshy texture. Tiny pockmarks dotted the surface, leading my eyes to the source. God damn! Even over the comms, I could hear my breath quicken. I swept my headlamp across skeletal remains fused into the hull itself. Twisted bone, half covered by the undulating grey flesh of whatever this ship was made from. No uniforms, no identifiers, just victims, cocooned in their final resting place. Trace! Garrett's voice tight now. Report! I swallowed. It wasn't just skeletons. Some were fresher. Leathery skin clinging to half-eaten corpses, others twisted in poses of absolute agony. It looked like whatever happened here turned fast. Violent. Looks like something went wrong a long time ago, Cap. I managed. My voice a touch hoarse. Lot of dead. Think it's safe, though. Air's clear. No radiation spikes. You see anything worth hauling back? Garrett didn't bother hiding his greed. My gaze swept further down the corridor passing other chambers branching off, empty and dark. This was the main artery. We'd have to backtrack to access those dead-end rooms. Nothing yet. Place is huge. Gonna take a while to search. Whatever tech is here, it's built in. Grady, get your ass in gear. Trace needs backup and I want eyes on whatever's in there. Garrett barked the order, then turned back to me. Be careful, kid. This ain't some rusty tugboat. This... This is our ticket to the good life. Yeah, no pressure then. Grady thumped through the airlock, his heavy footsteps fading into the vastness of the alien metal. His helmet lamp barely bathed the corridor in a green glow, casting long, sinister shadows that danced over the skeletal remains. I pointed my own headlamp at a branching passage ahead. Let's check this one first. The door seamlessly blended with the curved wall, a bio-scanner on my forearm chirped. I pressed my palm against the smooth surface, and with a hiss and a faint hum, the organic material yielded. The smell intensified here. A metallic tang mixed with something I couldn't quite place. Like decay, but filtered through a thousand years of alien biology. The chamber beyond was small, cramped and filled with glowing pods. They were vaguely ovoid about the size of a man and hummed with an internal light. 
What the hell are those? Grady rasped, his voice tight. I approached one cautiously, my hand hovering over the smooth, vaguely fleshy surface. It fluttered faster under my touch, tendrils of vibrant blue light sparkling within. A primal sense of wrongness clawed at my gut. These weren't storage pods. They were something far more horrifying. Let's back out, I muttered, a cold sweat prickling my scalp. As if triggered by my words, one of the pods lurched. A sickly yellow light flared from within, momentarily blinding me. The hum pitched higher, a sound that crawled under my skin. Then, with a sickening squelch, the pod split open. Light erupted, a blinding spear that momentarily overwhelmed my visor. I threw myself back, slamming into Grady and knocking us both to the floor. My heart hammered against my ribs. What the? Grady roared, scrambling to his feet. The light dimmed, revealing the source. A figure emerged from the ruptured pod, a humanoid silhouette vaguely resembling the skeletal remains in the corridor. But this was no corpse. It glowed with an intense light, its skin stretched taut over a skeletal frame that seemed to be warping, growing. The creature let out a shriek, a horrifying blend of screech and howl that sent a fresh wave of terror crashing over me. Then with a speed that belied its skeletal form, it launched itself at me. I fumbled for my sidearm, the familiar weight a small comfort in this alien nightmare. The first shot went wide, the creature a flash of motion. It slammed into me, its unnatural strength knocking the wind from my lungs. We grappled, my gloved hands slipping on its slick, glowing skin. It reared back, its mouth contorting into a horrifying parody of a human maw, rows of needle-like teeth glinting in the dim light. I squeezed the trigger again, the bullet exploding against its chest. It recoiled, a sizzling sound emanating from the wound. But it wasn't enough. The creature lunged again, its skeletal arm pinning mine against the wall, its glowing claws scraped against my visor, sparks erupting from the metal. Grady! I screamed, my voice hoarse. Help! A blur of green light. Grady's shotgun roared, the sound deafening in the confined space. The force of the buckshot sent the creature flying backward, slamming into a pod. The pod ruptured showering us in a noxious shower of glowing fluid. The creature writhed on the floor, its light dimming, its shrieks turning into gurgling moans. Then, with a final twitch, it went still. We stood there, chests heaving, the metallic tang of blood and alien ichor thick in the air. My visor glitched, its internal system struggling to clear the thick, glowing fluid. What the hell was that?! Grady rasped, his voice barely a whisper. I didn't have an answer. All I could see was the heart of the ruptured pod, a silent warning in the green light. This wasn't just a derelict ship. It was a tomb, a monument to some horrific event. And we'd just woken the dead. My breaths rattled through the comlink. The fluid stung my eyes even through the visor, leaving a hazy film that distorted the scene. Through the swirling distortion, I saw the creature, no, the thing, twitch weakly on the floor. Its form, a warped mockery of human anatomy, seemed to be slowly dissolving, its skeletal frame losing its glow. Is it dead? Grady asked hesitantly. I couldn't tell. This whole scenario felt like a bad dream, a visceral nightmare unfolding before my very eyes. I gingerly lowered my weapon the metal still warm from repeated discharges. The chamber felt smaller now, suffocating. The stench of ozone and the acrid bite of the alien liquid filled my helmet, a potent and unwelcome cocktail. Let's get out of here, I croaked. Back to the corridor, now! We moved like automatons, every step punctuated by the sharp clicks of our boots on the smooth floor. The mangled pod shone a sickly yellow, a silent accusation. We retraced our steps back to the main corridor. The image of the creature burned into my retinas. The skeletal remains lining the walls suddenly felt less macabre, more like a gruesome foreshadowing. What had happened here? 
Who built this magnificent ship, only to have it become a twisted tomb filled with these... things? The questions hammered against my skull, drowning out the practical considerations like loot and wealth, which had seemed so tantalizing just mere moments ago. Captain, I started, then coughed, trying to clear the metallic tang from my throat. We need to get out of here, now! Hold your horses, kid! Captain Garrett's voice crackled over the comlink, a touch strained. Did you find anything valuable? What's the holdup? Not valuable, I stammered, struggling with the unfamiliar words. We found something dangerous, hostile. The silence on the other end was deafening. Then, a low growl. Speak plainly, Trace, what the hell did you find? I took a deep breath, trying to find the right words. Creatures. Mutated things. One of them attacked us. Another pause filled with the hiss of static. Finally, Garrett spoke again, his voice clipped. Mutants! How many? Are they dangerous? One, for now. And, yeah, dangerous. It... it almost got me. My report seemed to be sinking in. I could practically hear the wheels turning in Garrett's head. He wasn't a sentimental man, but the thought of losing a crew member especially someone with my salvage skills, must have been a bitter pill to swallow. All right, Trace, he finally said. Stay put. Grady, get back to the airlock. We're pulling out. Disappointment flashed across my mind, quickly replaced by a surge of relief. Getting out alive seemed like a far better option than becoming another skeletal decoration on this forsaken ship. The minutes ticked by like hours as we waited for Grady to return. The silence was fractured only by the distant hiss and hum of the derelict ship. Despite the chill running down my spine, I couldn't help but feel a morbid curiosity niggling at the edges of my fear. Trace, you still there? Grady's voice cut through the quiet, strained but steady. Yeah, I'm here. Where are you? Coming through the airlock now. Something's wrong, Cap. The door controls aren't responding. A low curse rumbled from the captain. Try manually, we ain't staying here. I held my breath, waiting for the telltale hiss of the inner airlock opening. But instead, there was only silence. A tense silence that stretched on and on, heavy with growing dread. Grady! My voice crackled through the comlink. What's happening? Static. Just crackling, distorted static. Then, a sound a horrifying screech that ripped through the silence, turning my blood to ice. It was a sound I recognized all too well, the shriek of the creature, closer this time, filled with primal rage and hunger. My heart hammered, Grady's scream, raw and cut short, hung heavy in the air, replaced by the creature's shriek. It filled the corridor, warping and amplifying around countless bends, a symphony of primal horror. Panic threatened to paralyze me, but the cold weight of survival snapped me out of it. I scrambled back away from the direction of the airlock, weapon clutched tight in my sweating hands. The shriek came again, closer this time. This wasn't one creature. It was a pack, drawn by the commotion like scavengers to a fresh kill. My mind raced, desperate for an exit strategy. Escape through the main airlock was a gamble I wasn't willing to take. I needed another way out. My eyes darted across the corridor, scanning for anything, anything at all that could offer refuge. My gaze landed on one of the branching passages we hadn't explored. It was a dark moor, the interior swallowed by an even deeper blackness. But at this point, any unknown seemed preferable to facing the horrors out there. With a burst of adrenaline, I sprinted towards the passage, my boots slapping a frantic rhythm against the cold metal floor. The shrieks grew louder, closer, the pack hot on my heels. My frantic gaze swept across the smooth wall beside the passage, and then I saw it, a door slightly ajar. It hadn't been there before, at least not that I noticed, but with the creatures closing in, I didn't hesitate. I threw myself through the opening, slamming the door shut behind me. The biolock hissed as it cycled a desperate prayer against the onslaught outside. Darkness. Absolute, 
suffocating darkness. Fear pressed in from all sides. The only sounds were the pounding of my heart and muffled shrieks and growls through the sealed doorway. I fumbled for a spare chem light on my belt, snapping it to activate. The dim, green glow offered a precarious light source, illuminating the narrow confines of the tunnel. It was just wide enough for me to squeeze through, the walls slick and cold against my back. The tunnel twisted and turned, a labyrinthine maze designed to disorient. With each turn, the green light revealed more of the tunnel's unsettling nature. Streaks ran along the walls, glowing faintly like an arterial network. This wasn't just an emergency escape hatch, it was an integral part of the ship's anatomy. Panic clawed at my throat again. What kind of ship integrated these horrors into its very structure? What had happened here to create such monstrosities? Questions hammered at my mind, offering no answers, only amplifying the fear eating away at my sanity. A sudden scraping sound sent my heart leaping into my throat. The shrieks and growls had stopped. Had the creatures found another way in? I froze, straining to hear any further movement. Then, through the green haze, I saw it. A tendril slithered in through a crack in the ceiling. It was followed by another, then another, weaving down the walls towards me like predatory vines. This wasn't a regular tunnel. It was part of the creature, a deadly embrace closing in on its prey. A desperate scream tore from my throat, the sound lost in the suffocating darkness. I scrambled back, adrenaline fueling my movements, but the tunnel narrowed, offering no escape. The tendrils writhed closer, their glowing tips inches from my face. In that moment of utter despair, movement in the far end of the tunnel caught my eye. A faint blue light ahead, a welcome beacon in this hellhole. Hope, brittle and fragile, sparked within me. It was a gamble, a desperate lunge into the unknown, but it was a chance. With a yell, I pushed myself forward, slamming through the tendrils that lashed out at me. Pain flared across my back as they tore through my suit, but I ignored it, focused only on the blue light. The tunnel narrowed further, threatening to crush me, but just as the walls seemed about to close in, I stumbled out into a vast chamber. Relief flooded through me, so intense it almost made me buckle. The space seemed vast, at least five times the size of the cramped corridors of the derelict ship. But what struck me most wasn't the size, but the light. Gone was the oppressive darkness of the tunnel. Here, the chamber was bathed in an ethereal blue glow, emanating from strange structures that lined the periphery. They resembled giant flowers, their petals glowing with an intensity that cast intricate patterns of light and shadow on the smooth, metallic floor. But the sense of respite was short-lived, the blue light illuminated not just beauty, but danger. In the center of the chamber, a colossal creature writhed on the floor. It was a horrifying amalgamation of the humanoid forms I'd encountered earlier, fused together into a monstrous mass of writhing bodies. Its skeletal frame warped, its glowing skin stretched taut as it let out an earth-shattering shriek. The sound reverberated through the chamber, vibrating through my bones. It was a symphony of pain and rage, a primal scream that spoke of a twisted evolution gone horribly wrong. This monstrosity, this king among the horrors, was the source of the blue light and the one that controlled the tendrils that hunted me. Just as my initial shock started to wear off, the chamber filled with movement. Smaller creatures, like bizarre parodies of the ones in the pod, flooded in through unseen passages. Their glowing eyes locked onto me, their skeletal forms radiating a predatory hunger. I was trapped. Between the monstrous king in the center and the swarm of its minions, escape seemed impossible. Panic threatened to overwhelm me, but amidst the terror, defiance sparked. I wouldn't go down without a fight. Checking my sidearm, I found my ammunition dangerously low. Two clips left, not enough for the horde, but maybe enough to buy me some breathing room. I braced myself. 
it was time to gamble. With a primal yell, I drew my sidearm and started firing. The chamber boomed with the bang of my weapon. Some of the smaller creatures shrieked and dissolved into wisps of glowing mist, but they kept coming, a relentless tide of hunger. As I emptied my first clip, I saw movement from the central mass. One of the fused humanoid forms, bigger than the rest, detached itself from the writhing mass. It was a mockery of a soldier, its skeletal frame wrapped in armoured chitin, its glowing eyes burning with hate. It charged towards me, a monstrous claw outstretched. I dodged as best I could, the claw scraping against my arm, sending a jolt of searing pain through me. I squeezed off the last of my ammunition, catching the creature square in the chest. It stumbled back but didn't fall. Just then, the air crackled. A shimmering blue shield, faintly reminiscent of the light filling the chamber, erupted around me just as the armoured creature lunged for the second time. The claw slammed against the shield, leaving a smoking scorch mark, but couldn't penetrate. Confused and disoriented, I looked towards the source of the shield. There, standing guard outside the blue barrier, was another figure. He wore the familiar orange and black jumpsuit of the salvage crew, but his gaunt features and hardened eyes betrayed the ordeal they'd all endured. It was Grady. He hadn't died. Somehow, he'd escaped the airlock and found his way here. But even as relief washed over me, I knew this wasn't over. This was just the beginning of another fight, a desperate struggle for survival in the heart of a nightmare. Relief morphed into a cold knot of apprehension as my gaze locked onto Grady. He looked haggard, his suit singed and smeared with what could only be alien ichor. He held a device I didn't recognize, a bulky metal cylinder that glowed faintly with the same blue light that bathed the chamber. The shield protecting me hummed with an unstable energy. You made it! I rasped, the words catching in my dry throat. He offered a curt nod, the strain etched on his face mirrored in his voice. The airlock jammed. Took some improvising. His cryptic words offered little comfort. The swarm surged again, their shrieks mingling with the monstrous king's pained roar. They battered against the blue barrier, their glowing claws leaving smoking gouges on its surface. The shield flashed erratically, its defensive energy seemingly waning. What is that thing you're holding? I shouted, gesturing at the cylinder. Emergency force field generator, Grady grunted, firing what looked like a blue energy bolt from the device. It arced through the horde, dissolving several creatures in a flash of sizzling light. Found it lying around, figured it might come in handy. Handy. An understatement if ever there was one. The force field held, for now, but it was a temporary solution. The creatures wouldn't stop coming, not while the king fueled their hunger. My mind raced, searching for an escape route. This chamber was a glorified death trap. We needed to get back to the main corridor, maybe find a way to breach the hull and launch an escape pod. But how? How to even consider escape when facing a horde fueled by a monstrous god king? We can't stay here, I yelled, the chamber bouncing with the deafening shrieks. No kidding, Grady retorted, firing another energy bolt. The device hummed, emitting an ominous whine. A horrifying realization dawned on me. The device was draining. Soon the shield would fall, and we wouldn't have the firepower to hold them off. There has to be another way, I roared, desperate for a solution. Suddenly, movement in the distance caught my eye. Beyond the horde, a faint red light blinked rhythmically from a previously unnoticed alcove. It was a beacon, a weak signal struggling to pierce the surreal blue glow. There, I pointed, my voice ragged. Over there, maybe it's an exit. Another passage. Hope flashed in Grady's eyes, a fleeting spark of desperation mirrored in mine. The alcove offered a slim hope, a potential escape route. But reaching it meant braving the gauntlet of the swarm. Cover me! I yelled, already formulating a plan. Grady raised the energy cannon. As the shield faltered precariously, I drew my combat knife, the serrated blade glinting in the blue light. 
With a desperate lunge, I threw myself through a gap in the swarm, weaving and dodging through the snapping claws and glowing bites. Pain flared across my arm as a creature's claw raked across my suit. Ignoring it, I pressed forward, fueled by adrenaline and a thin sliver of hope. The creatures snarled and snapped, their glowing eyes fixated on me, the easiest prey. Grady fired the energy cannon, his blasts carving a path through the swarm, momentarily buying me critical seconds. Reaching the alcove, I skidded to a halt, my lungs burning, my body screaming in protest. The entrance was tight, barely a human-sized gap. It was choked by a curtain of vines. There was no turning back. I plunged into the writhing mass of organic wires. The vines wrapped around me in a slimy embrace. They throbbed with a strange energy, sending shivers down my spine. But they didn't attack, didn't try to constrict me. Instead, they gently nudged me forward, guiding me into the darkness beyond. I emerged on the other side, coughing and gasping for breath. In front of me, the darkness of the alcove wasn't absolute. A faint orange glow emanated from somewhere deeper within, casting shadows on the smooth metallic floor. I held my headlamp aloft, the beam cutting through the gloom. Ahead, a tunnel, a narrow, cramped tunnel leading deeper into the bowels of this derelict ship. The tunnel wasn't just devoid of the flora that crawled across the rest of the ship. It was different. The smooth metallic walls here were pitted and scarred, covered in strange symbols, an alien language carved into the very bones of the derelict. Curiosity battled with my survival instincts. This wasn't part of the plan. The plan, such as it had been, was to reach the main corridor. But this, this unexpected detour felt wrong. Yet the silence was almost welcoming after the cacophony of the chamber. Grady didn't hesitate. He slipped through the opening beside me. His eyes, narrowed in the dim light of my headlamp, scanned the tunnel ahead. What is this place? I whispered, the oppressive silence amplifying my voice. Beats me, Grady grunted. But it's quiet. Maybe a dead end. Maybe something else. We ventured deeper, the orange symbols lining the walls seeming to writhe and dance in the light. The air here felt stagnant, thick with the smell of ozone and a metallic tang that was both old and strangely familiar. The tunnel opened into a vast chamber, easily dwarfing the one bathed in blue light. Here the orange glow emanated from towering structures that resembled crystals, giant multifaceted crystals that shone with an internal light, casting long, distorted shadows across the chamber floor. But unlike the horrors I'd faced so far, this place didn't feel malevolent. It felt ancient, powerful, and oddly peaceful. As we cautiously stepped further into the chamber, a deep resonant hum filled the air. A platform rose silently from the center of the chamber, its surface a smooth metallic black. Engraved on it, a symbol. The same symbol etched onto the tunnel walls, glowing faintly with the same orange light. What the? Grady breathed, his voice barely a whisper. There was no turning back now. Curiosity, morbid and irresistible, propelled me forward. Stepping gingerly onto the platform, I felt a surge of energy course through me, a jolt that spread throughout my body. For a moment, I saw a flash of images, alien landscapes, fleeting glimpses of a civilization long gone. Then, the vision abruptly ended. The hum intensified, growing louder, accompanied by a blinding flash of orange light. The platform lurched upwards, accelerating with a force that pinned me to its surface. Through the blurred vision caused by the speed, I glimpsed Grady, dwarfed below, his face contorted in a mixture of fear and astonishment. The light intensified, turning the world around me into a swirling vortex of orange. Then, with a deafening boom, everything went white. The white light receded, giving way to an inky blackness that pressed against my eyelids. Disoriented, I blinked, my vision slowly adjusting to the dimness. My body ached, 
every muscle screaming in protest. I was lying on a hard, cold surface, the metallic tang of blood thick in my mouth. I pushed myself upright and scanned my surroundings. I wasn't on the derelict ship anymore. The chamber walls weren't smooth metal, they were rough-hewn stone, damp and cool to the touch. The air was thick with the smell of moss and damp earth, the faint scent of rain carried on a cool breeze. Above me, a jagged opening served as a ceiling, revealing a sliver of an alien sky, a panorama of swirling purples and greens dotted with unfamiliar constellations. Relief washed over me, infused with a healthy dose of fear. I was alive, but where the hell was I? A movement at the edge of my vision drew my attention. Grady. He was sprawled a few feet away, groaning softly as he sat up, his face pale and drawn. His suit was ripped and scorched, but he seemed relatively unharmed. What? What happened? He rasped, his voice hoarse. I... I don't know. I admitted, the truth hanging heavy in the air. The cryptic chamber with the orange light, the surge of energy, the blinding flash. It all seemed like a fever dream. Together we rose to our feet, our bodies protesting with every movement. We explored the chamber, finding nothing but more jagged walls and the faint trickle of water somewhere deeper inside the cavern. There were no obvious exits, no clues as to where the platform had taken us. Discouraged and weary, we huddled together in the centre of the chamber, the silence pressing in on us. Time seemed to stretch into an eternity, punctuated only by the drip of water and the coughs that racked Grady's frame. Just as despair started to nibble at the edges of my sanity, a faint sound from above, a rhythmic thumping like distant footsteps, we both scrambled to our feet. The pounding grew louder, closer, accompanied by a deep growl. We weren't alone on this alien world, but whatever was coming, it wasn't the horrors we'd encountered on the derelict ship. That much was clear. I gripped my knife tighter, a meager defense against the unknown. Grady checked the energy levels of his improvised cannon. As the pounding reached a crescendo, a hulking figure emerged from the opening in the ceiling. It was humanoid, vaguely bipedal, but its proportions were monstrous. Its thick, muscled arms dragged a massive club along the ground, leaving gouges in the stone floor. Its skin, a mottled green, seemed to glow faintly in the alien twilight. Two glowing red eyes locked onto us, filled with a primal intelligence. We were face to face with another apex predator, yet this one didn't feel inherently malevolent. It surveyed us with a curious detachment, its low growls more a warning than a threat. The situation was a stalemate. Neither we, armed with our meagre weapons, nor this creature, a titan of this alien world, seemed eager to initiate a fight. Then, a memory rippled through my mind, the fleeting vision from the platform, images of an advanced civilization. This creature, perhaps, wasn't just a predator. Maybe it was a guardian, a guardian of this place, a protector awakened by our arrival on their world. Slowly, cautiously, I lowered my knife. Grady hesitantly followed suit. The creature watched us, its red eyes unwavering. Then, with a deep rumble that shook the chamber, it turned and lumbered back towards the opening, disappearing into the alien darkness. We stood there for a long moment, the silence heavy with unspoken questions. This unknown world, was it a prison? A sanctuary? The answers remained elusive, lost in the vast gulf that separated our species. But one thing was clear, we wouldn't be leaving any time soon. We were stranded on this alien world, far from the derelict ship and our crewmates. Survival, once again, became our primary objective.